Wings of Fire, The Dragonette Prophecy by Duty Sutherland Part 1, Under the Mountains Chapter 1, Six Years Later Clay didn't think he was the right dragon for the big heroic destiny. Oh, he wanted to be. He wanted to be the great mothering saviour of the dragon world, glorious and brave. He wanted to do all the things expected of him. He wanted to look at the world, figure out what was broken and fix it. But he wasn't a natural hatched hero. He had no le legendary qualities at all. He liked sleeping more than studying, and he kept losing chickens in the cave during hiding practice because he was paying attention to his friends instead of watching for feathers. He was alright at fighting, but alright wasn't going to stop the war and save the dragon tribes. He needed to be ex extraordinary. He was the biggest dragonette, so he was supposed to be the scary, tough one. The minders wanted him to be a terrifyingly dangerous. Clay felt as dangerous as a cauliflower. Fight! The atta his attack howled, flinging him across the cave. Clay crashed into the rock wall and scrambled up again trying to spread his mud-coloured wings for balance. Red talons raked at his face and he ducked away. Come on! The red dragon snarled. S -s 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 Stop holding back! Find the killer inside you and let it out! I'm trying, Clay said. Maybe if we could stop and talk about it. She lunged for him again. Faint to the left, roll right, use, the, use, use your fire! Clay tried to duck under her wings to attack her from below, but of course he rolled the wrong way. One of her tongues smashed him to to the ground and he yelped with pain. Which left was that? Kestrel bellowed in his ears. I are all mudwings this stupid or are you just death? Well if you keep this up, I will soon soon be, Clay thought. The skyrim lifted her claws and he wriggled free. I don't know about other mudwings, he pres protested, licking his sore tongues. Obviously, but perhaps we could try fighting without all the shouting and see. He stopped hearing the family hiss that came from one of Kestrel's fire attacks. He threw his wings over his head, tucked his long neck in, and rolled into the maze of stalagmites that studded one corner of the cave. Flame blasted with rocks around him the tip of his tail. Cowards! The old dragon bellowed. She smashed one of the rock columns into a shower of sharp, dark, black pebbles. Clay covered his eyes and almost immediately felt her stamp down hard on his tail. Ow! He yelled. You said stopping tails was cheating! He seized the closest stalagmite between his claws and and scra scrabbled up on top of it. From his perch near the roof, he glared down at his guardian. I'm your teacher, Kestrel, Kestrel snarled. Nothing I do is cheating. Get down here, fight like a Skywing. But I'm not a Skywing, Clay thought re rebelliously. I'm a Mudwing. I don't like setting things on fire or flapping around in circles, biting like dragon's necks. His teeth still ached from Kestrel's Jewel hard scales. Can't I fight one of the others? He asked. I'm much better at that. The older dragonet were his own size, nearly. And they didn't cheat, though, well, most of the time. He actually liked fighting them with them. Oh, yes. Which one would you prefer, the stunted sand ring or the lazy rain ring? Kestrel said, because I'm sure you'll get chosen out out on the battlefield. Her tail glowed like embers as she lashed it back and forth. Glory's not lazy, Clay said loudly. She's just not built for fighting, that's all. Reb said there's not much to fight about in the rainforest because the rain wings all have food they want. Have... Mm. He said that's why they stayed out of the war so far, 
because none of the rival queens want rain wings in their armies anyway, he said. He says, Stop yammering and get down here, Kettles roared. She reared up on her black back legs and flared her wings so she suddenly looked three times bigger. With a yelp of alarm, Clay tried to leap to the next stalagmite, but his wings unfell too slowly and he smacked into the, into the size of one. Sparks flew as his claws scraped down the, the jagged rocks. He let out another yowl of pain as Kestrel snaked her head between the columns, seized his tail in her teeth and yanked him out, out into the open. Her tail was closed around his neck and she hissed in his ear. Where's the violent little monster I saw when you hatched? That's the dragon we need for the prophecy. Gallop! Clay, Clay squawked, squawked cl clawing at her grip. He could feel his strained burn scars on her palm, scraping against his scales. That was how battle training with Kestrels always ended, with him unconscious, having sore or limp for days after. Fight back, he thought. Get mad. Do something. But although he was the biggest of the dragon nets, they were still a year away from being full grown. And Kestrel towed over him. He tried to summon of that helpful violent rage, but all he could think of it to be over soon, and then I can go have dinner. So not the most heroic train of thought. Suddenly Ketra let out a roar and dropped him. Fire blasted over Clay's head as he hit the floor with thud. The red dragon whirled around, behind her panting definitely was the seawing dragonette Tsunami. Her red gold scales scale was caught between her sharp white teeth. She spat it out and glared at her teacher. Stop picking on clay, Tsunami growled, or I'll bite you again. Her deep blue scales shimmered like cobalt glass in the torchlight. The gills in her long neck were pulsing like they always did when she was angry. Kestrel sat back and flicked her tail around to examine the bite mark. She bared her teeth at Tsunami. Aren't you sweet? Protecting a dragon who tried to kill you while you were still an egg. But luckily, you big dragons were there to save us our lives, Tsunami said. And we sure appreciate it because now we get to hear about it all the time. She marched around to stand between Clay and Kestrel. Clay winced. He hated hearing this story. He didn't understand it. He never wanted to hurt the other dragonettes, so why did had he attacked the eggs during hatching. Did he really have a killer monster inside him somewhere? The armor mind is whips and doom, he said ha ha he'd, been, he'd been ferocious when he hatched. They had to throw him in the river to protect the other eggs from him. Kestrel wanted to find that monster and use it when, when he fought. But he was, was afraid if he ever did, he would hate himself, and so would everyone else. Thinking what he nearly done to his friends made him feel like all the fire had been sucked out of him. He didn't particularly want to be violent, angry, monster, even if Kestrel thought that would be a, an improvement. But maybe there was that was the only way to make the prophecy come true. Maybe that monster was his destiny. All right, Kestrel, said dis dismissively. We're finished here anyway. I'll mark another fella in your scroll, Mudwing. She snorted a, sm a small flame into the air and swept out of the cave. Clay flopped down on, on the floor and soon as her red tail had vanished from sight, it feels like every one of his girls were stinging from burn marks. She's going to be so mean to you during your training tomorrow, he said to Tsunami. Oh no, the seeing Dragonet gasped. i never seen Kestrel be mean before. That, that would be so unexpected and out of character. Ow! Clay groaned. Don't make me laugh. I think my ribs are broken. Your ribs aren't broken, Tsunami said. Poking him in the side with her nose. 
Dragon bones are almost as hard as diamonds. You'll be fine. Get up and jump in the river. River. No, Clay blood buried her. He said, under his wings. Too cold. Jumping the ri river was Tsunami's only solution for everything. Bored, aching bones, dry scales, brain overstuffed with a history of a war. Jumping the river! She shouted whenever any of the dragonettes complained. She certainly did not care that she was the only dragon who could breathe underwater, but most other dragon tribes hated getting wet. Clay didn't mind getting wet, but he couldn't stand being cold, and the underground river that flowed through the cave, the cave home was always freezing. <clears throat> getting Tsunami ordered, she seized his talons between her front talons and started dragging him towards the river. You'll feel better! I will not, Clay! shouted, clawing at the smooth stone floor. I'll feel colder, stop it! Go away! Ah! His process went up in a cloud of bubbles as Tsunami dropped, dumped him in the ice water. When he resurfaced his surface, she was floating beside him, ducking her head and splashing water over her scales like a beautiful overgrown fish. Clay felt like a gawky brown blob next to her. He splashed in the shallows and lay down on his submerged rock ledge, with his head resting on the bank of the river. He would admit it, but the bones are next did feel better in the water, but the currents helped wash away the smoky rock dust caught between his dry scales. Still too cold, still too cold, thought Clay, though. Clay scratched the rocks below him, <clears throat> Why couldn't there be just a little mud down here? Kest will be, will be sorry one day when I'm queen of the sea wings, Tsunami, Tsunami said, swimming up and down the narrow channel. I thought only a queen's daughter or sister could challenge her for the throne. Clay said Tsunami swam so fast. He wished he had webs between his talons too, or gills. Or a tail like us, so so powerful she could nearly empty the river with one big splash. But well, maybe the saving queen is my mother, and I'm a lost princess. She like she said, like in the story. Oh, everything the dragonettes knew, knew about about the outside world came from the scrolls picked up by the talents of peace. Their favourite was the missing princess, a legend about a runaway sailing dragonet whose royal family tore up the whole ocean looking for her. At the end, she found her way home and her parents welcomed her with open wings and feasting with joy and, and joy. <laughs> Kay always skipped the adventures in the middle of a story. He just liked the last part, the happy mother and father. And the feasting, the feasting sounded pretty great too. I wonder what my parents are like, he said. I wonder if any of our parents are still alive, Tsunami said. Clay didn't like to think about that. He knew the dra dra he knew dragons were dying in the war every day. Kestrel and webs brought back news of bloody battles, scorched lands and burning powers of dragon bodies. But he had to believe his parents were still alive. Do you think they ever miss us? Definitely! Tsunami flicked the, a spray of water at him with her tail. I bet mine were frantic when we stole my egg. Just like in the story. <laughs> and mine tore apart the marshes, Clay said. Held all imagined scenes of parents desperately searching every si ever since for young dragonettes. <clears throat> Clay liked the idea that someone out there was looking for him, but someone missed him and wanted him back. Tsunami flipped onto her back, 
gazing up at the stone roof with her translucent green eyes. The other talents of peace knew what they were doing, she said bitterly. No one would ever find us here. They listened to the river gurgle and the tor torches crackle for a moment. They won't be underground forever, Clay said, trying to make her feel better. I mean, if the talents, talents of peace want us to stop this war, they'll have to let us out sometime, he said, scratched behind his ears thoughtfully. Starflight says it's only two more years. He only had to hold hold on that long. I think we can go home and eat as many cows as we, as we want. <clears throat> well, first we save the world, Tsunami said, and then we go home. Right, said Clay. How, how they were going to save the world was a little fuzzy, but everyone seemed to think they'll figure it out when the time came. Clay pulled himself out of the water, his waterlogged wings heavy and drooping. He spread them in front of one of the torches arcing his neck and tried to get warm. Feeble waves of heat wafted against his scales. Unless, Tsunami said, Clay lo lowered his head to look for it. Unless what? Unless we leave sooner, she said, flipping, flipped over. She, bleh. she flipped over and pulled herself out of the waters in one graceful motion. motion. Leave? Clay echoed, startledly, steadily. How? On our own? Right, why not? She said. If we can find a way out, why should we have to wait another two years? I'm ready to save the world now, aren't you? Clay wasn't sure if he'll ever, ever be ready to save the world. He he figured the Talents of Peace would tell them what they had to do. Only the three Guardian Dragons, Kestrel, Webs and Doom, knew, knew where the Dragonets were hidden. But there were a whole network of talents out there getting ready for the prophecy. We can't stop the war by ourselves, he said. We wouldn't know where to start. Tsunami <clears throat> flapped her wings at him experientially, showering him with cold droplets. We can too stop the war on our own, she said. That's the whole point of, of the prophecy. Maybe in two years, Clay said. Maybe by then I'll have found my dangerous side. Maybe I'll be the ferocious fighter like Kestrel wants me to be. Maybe sooner, she said stubbornly. Just think about it, alright? He shifted his feet. Alright, I'll think about it. At least that way he could stop arguing with her. Tsunami so cocked her head. I hear dinner, the faint sounds of dismayed mooing echoed up up the tunnel behind them. She poked at Clay cheerfully. Rescue to the holes, she said. Well, she welled and pound, pounded away without waiting for a response. The torches in the battering seemed dimmer and cold water was slipping on, under Clay's scales. <clears throat> He folded his wings and swept his tail through the debris of a smashing rocks and rock columns. Smashed rock columns. Tsunami was crazy. The five dragonets weren't ready to start the war. They wouldn't even know how to survive on their own. Maybe Tsunami was brave and tough like a hero should be, but Sunny, Glory and Starflight, Clay thought. Of all the things that might hurt them and wish he could give them his own scales and claws and teeth for extra protection. <clears throat> Besides, there was no way to escape the, the caves. The Talents of Peace had made sure of that. S -s 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 Still, part of him couldn't help wondering what it would be like to go to, 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 go to home now instead of waiting another two years. <clears throat> Back to the marshes, 
to the swamps to, to a whole tribe of mudlings who looked like him and fought like him. Back to his parents, whoever they were. What if they could do it? What if the Dragonettes could escape and survive and save the world their own way? Well, that was chapter one of Wings of Fire, the Dragonette Prophecy. I do hope you enjoyed my reading, well, my dramatic reading of, of this book. And if you do, sub, like, comment, and so I know how to improve my writing. Thank you for watching.